All right, hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks for being here. All right. Okay, let me make sure everything is working. Make sure the Steam is working. All right, I forgot one thing. Uh. Ah, crap, forgot this. Uh, all right, just. Okay, I think it's working. All right. Okay, great. All right. Okay, so I was just missing this window. All right. Okay, so... <clears throat> hey, everyone. How's it going? Thanks for being here at... 4 p.m. in the afternoon or whatever it is your time just minimize everything and okay all right okay right so basically I'm gonna be working on the game trying to make a better progress trying to make the next update for the demo and yeah at the same time trying to answer some questions something so let's see wait is this my oh right it's just my my thing wasn't live okay yeah, I think everything is good. Okay, great. All right. What is your OS? I'm on Windows. Pretty much always use Windows. I've never actually used a Mac. I've only used it like for five minutes trying to make a a iOS build for something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty much always using Windows. Okay, so basically the main thing that I would like to do is something that it's still not implemented in the demo, which is over here the goal. So basically I need to add a bunch of logic to track all of the various goals. So clone 30 dinkies, build a rocket, fully automate the colony, and keep the colony safe. So pretty much automating those goals, that is kind of thing that I'm going to want to do. All right. Happy birthday. Okay, happy birthday, Koyan. Hey, that's nice. I hope that helps. <laughs> All right, okay, okay, so let me get to this. So first thing, I'm going to need some kind of goal manager. All right, let me make an empty game object for the goal manager. And uh, just wait for it to compile. Nice pen spinning skill. <laughs> I pretty much only know one or two tricks by now. Most of them I've kind of forgotten with the years, but yeah, it's fun to keep the brain occupied, or rather keep the hands occupied instead of the thing. Use the Unity Alt UI. Do you mean, yeah, I'm using regular Unity UI. I'm not using UI Toolkit. So that one, as far as I know, actually I haven't kept up with the updates on that one for quite a while, but I think that by now it is still only uh, editor only, or maybe it already has I'm not sure, but yeah, I am using just regular Unity UI, so all of these, these are all of my UI windows for the demo, so all of them separated, and all of these are basically just images, buttons, all of it, super basic. When will the new dot Citroen be available? Uh, I don't know, I still have to go research that, so hopefully sometime next month, that's kind of the, that's kind of the goal, that's what I'm going to try to do. Okay, so... Uh, for the goal manager, all right, so I'm going to... Okay, so first thing, let me actually keep track of the dinky amount. Uh, so, update visual. Actually, do I go with the visual? Maybe not. Jiffy is a measurement of time, is it? <laughs> all right. So fast in writing code. <laughs> I mean, that's just spending many, many years... Uh, Typing things that kind of that kind of has that effect. Okay. Uh, right. So I'm trying to think because I should probably have a visual and one. So how am I going to have? I guess it's I have like a private end for the denki amount 
uh, goal. Do I call it goal? Maybe. So kind of like this equals 30. Uh, private ball has built rocket. Ball for the uh, is colony fully automated. And let's see what I'm going for. Actually, I'm trying to define these, but I should probably just... Yeah, first thing I need to actually... Okay, so let me think how am I, how am I going to do this. Finish a single player kitchen course in one hour. You finished it in one hour? You watched a 10 hour video in one hour? <laughs> okay, I mean, that's impressive, so all right. Okay, so up here, I think I'm going to listen to my time tick system and pretty much on every second, I'm going to try to get these things. Learning your turn-based strategy course, 58% done. Oh, that's awesome. Learn about Singleton, ah, oh, nice. When should I use singletons? There are some rules, internet opinions vary. Uh, yeah, it depends on, for me as a general rule, basically if there is something of which there's only one thing, then by all means go ahead and make it a singleton. So over here on this project, I've got tons of singletons. Like for example, over here, the tutorial manager. This one handles the tutorial. There's only one tutorial manager. So it makes perfect sense for this one to be a singleton. Then on the other hand, for dinkies, I've got tons of dinkies. So it makes no sense for the dinky itself to be a singleton. Uh, on the player, kind of the same thing. So there are multiple players, but at the same time, there's only one local player. So I do have a singleton reference for the local instance. So yeah, pretty much for anything that you have just a single one of, by all means, go ahead and make it a singleton. As long as there only one exists, then that's a perfect thing. I know there are lots of people who really hate the singleton pattern and never actually want to use it. But for me, I find it to be super useful. If there's anything where just exists just one thing, then yep, it should definitely be a singleton. Okay, so let me try to think a little bit about this so basically the first thing is i want to do actually for dinky amount i can go to dinky because i'm pretty sure yeah i already got a get dinky amount so i can just do a debug.log on dinky amount and put in the dinky amount then i guess debug.log in order to test for the has built the rocket and for the rocket let's think how am i going to do i think the best thing is kind of how i was handling the uh my save system which i pretty much just did a query a physics query to find all the objects in the world pretty sure that's what i did right um uh, yep that's pretty much it so just doing a basic physics query so over here don't let me try to do pretty much the same thing so uh all right so i'm going to go to the entire world size and so on I like Total World Liberation more than Dinky Guards. Well, I mean, the good news is that game is not canceled. That one is just postponed for next year. So, yeah, definitely stay tuned for next year. Are you using ToonShade in this project? Yep, I'm using what is called the Quibbly asset. So if I can just go into the asset store. It's a really nice one. I've mentioned it a bunch of times. There, It has been part of a bunch of bundles. So, yeah, this is the one... That I'm using it's a really nice shader with tons and tons of options so over here in the game yeah I actually haven't actually played the game hey super chat Tracy hunt hey thanks so much thanks for being here I'm glad you like the videos thank you so much the first super chat oh that's cool <laughs> thanks for using your first super chat on me all right thank you so much uh, uh, okay what was I saying all oh, right the uh, the asset yeah, I'm basically using Quibbly. Okay, let me pick a bigger one with a bunch more things. So my big save with a nice big machine. So yeah, pretty much I'm using the Quibbly shader to make all of these assets look quite a bit more cartoony because these are actually the uh, Sci-Fi Worlds pack. Ah, crap, yes. The Sci-Fi Worlds. Yeah, basically this is the pack that I'm using for most of these assets. So see that little round thing? That is pretty much over here, the HQ. And you can see how it looks quite different because it's using quite a different uh, shader. So if you want to make your assets look quite a bit different, I would definitely recommend using an interesting shader. If you apply an interesting shader and everything kind of looks like it fits. So it looks pretty good. So so yeah, and basically the way that I was saying, uh, yeah, I'm using the uh, equivalent shader asset and I'm using just modifying the color of the outline in order to select which object is actually selected. And that has been quite useful. Pretty much just go 
into the materials. So I've got a ton of materials using all kinds of things. For example, over here for the food material. So I've got the food texture map and over here I've got a black outline and then I swap out for one that has a white outline. And that's pretty much how I'm handling the visuals for the object selection. So pretty basic and it works pretty well, I think. It changes the outline, which I think makes everything look quite nice. It's super easy to see what object is selected. So everything looks pretty good. Okay, all right. Okay, let me just continue with the goals here. So for the, although actually for the rocket, I was thinking about doing this, but yeah, once again, a while ago we were talking about singletons and for example, the rocket is only ever going to have a single rocket. So I can actually make this a singleton. So an instance with a get a private set and then down here on the awake, right by the way, just instance equals this since the rocket is only going to have this one. So for the goal manager, for this one to test if it has a rocket, just debug.log has rocket. And I can just go into the rocket base and the instance, if it is not known, then I do have rocket. If not, then I don't have rocket. Okay, so that's the other goal. And then fully automate the colony so no dinky is working. And for that, I actually also have the dinky get the dinky list. So this one returns a list of dinky for the dinky list. So I can get that one and do a for each uh, dinky dinky and the dinky list. I can cycle through all of those and dinky dot do I have an is idle? Is idle dinky behavior? Okay, great. All right, so I already have this function. So that actually simplifies things quite a bit. So if one of them is not idle, so uh, int uh, dinky's working, then dinky's working plus plus. If it is not idle, then dinky is working. So debug.log for, for the dinky's working and just put the dinky's working. Okay, so that's the other goal. And for the other one, so finally I'll make the colony so none of them can be working, then keep the colony safe. Okay, this is the one that is gonna be a bit tricky your PC configuration. Uh, I have no idea. I've got a, a 3080 and a uh, CPU is a 5950X, I think. It's like three years old, but still pretty good. Do you use Blender or any other 3D software? I've used it a little bit. I've tried learning Blender. I actually made a video because I, I followed the course and I did manage to learn quite a bit. So if you want to see what I managed to build in about 10 hours, then this was a fun video. You can actually learn quite a bit, even if you're, I mean, I'm definitely not a Blender Pro, but I did manage to build some pretty nice things over here. Let me just go, ah, crap, I can see. <laughs> uh, yeah, the final, the final thing actually looks pretty good. I made all these models after following a course for about 10 hours, I think, something like that, so yeah. Yeah, if you're interested in 3D modeling, Definitely, I would recommend you give it a shot because it's not as difficult as it seems, pretty much. Uh, right. Uh, okay, so. Oh, crap. This is messing up my save. That's okay. Keep the zoom be there. Uh, okay, so I'm going to have to figure out how do I keep the colony safe and then launch into space. Okay, but for these ones, I think the logic for these goals should be working. So let me just quickly test it out. All right. You know, Asset Forge by Kenny. I've never, I'm familiar with Kenny's assets, but I've never used Asset Forge. That's his like 3D modeling program, something like that, which does does seem quite interesting from what I see of his uh, GIFs posted on Twitter. It does seem quite interesting. So yeah, I've never used it myself, but yeah, if you want to make some simple things, then that can be quite useful. Okay, where's my console? Uh, okay, so apparently two dinkies are working. Is that correct? Okay, this one is working. So let's put this one on idle. Uh, any more dinkies that are working? And there's one over here picking up objects. No, not this one. Nope, not this one. Which one? That one. Why is this one picking up objects? Okay, I don't know, but set it on idle. Okay, so dinkies working zero. And true for the rocket? Really? Do I have a rocket here? Uh, I don't think I've built a rocket in this map. Did I? Okay, that's a bit strange because I don't think I've built a rocket. 
All right. Did I build the rocket anywhere? No. Or did I put it? Yeah, different from no. Okay. Are you planning to add features to the character on like a face or hat or something? Uh, yep, the asset pack that I chose for the characters has a, a ton of customization options. So yep, I will definitely be adding those in the future. Right now, the only thing that I have is just, just changing the colors. But yep, in the final version, it will indeed have tons of things that you can use to customize a character to make it look quite a bit interesting. Okay, so seriously, I... All right, so now I'm a bit confused. Did I... Added to the wrong thing. Uh, nope, I added it over here, the rocket base. So is this one? Okay, I'm not sure why this one is doing this, because this one should be null, right? Yeah. As rocket, let me just print out this, then that. How to make my name like yours with a black background the outline. These are the members. So yeah, Timbo Jones here is a member of the channel. So thank you so much, yeah. Uh, okay. Tutorials on planning out code for a game. Uh, I'm almost finished with your Build and Defender course and there are so many scripts that link together. I wonder how do you plan for that? Uh, as with so many things, the answer usually comes down to experience. So that's one answer. Uh, but the other answer is it really depends on a person-by-person -person base. Like, uh, some people like to make all kinds of diagrams and really, uh, really draw a bunch of pictures that say this system connects to this one, this one, and so on. Some people like to do that. For me, I don't really do that all that much. I just do it a, a tiny bit. And for the most part, yeah, I already have enough experience that I know when I think about some kind of system that I want to build. I already know how it's going to connect, what kind of other systems do I need to interact with those systems. Something like that. Okay, so that's even more strange. Did I change something? <laughs> okay, so this is one of those things that quite confused me, because a while ago it was saying true. Did I perhaps not save it? Don't you need to reset the singleton between the games? Nope, because the singleton just gets destroyed. So as soon as I change scenes, the objects that I'm over here, because for the singletons, I'm not using these as uh, static classes. These are, for example, over here, the goal manager. This is an actual regular mono behavior, which is attached to a regular game object on the scene. So as soon as I change scene, that game object is, is going to be destroyed. So the instance gets cleaned up automatically. So nope, you don't need to do that. The only place where I do need to reset is my, yeah, I've got a reset static data uh, mono behavior, just a nice class that exists on the main menu to restart to reset a bunch of things. And I'm pretty much just using it, for example, over here, I've got a static list. So this is not going to be cleared up automatically. So for this one, I do need to manually clear it up. And the most important thing is for all the events. So I've got a bunch of static events, like for this one, when any carry vehicle opens the UI or when any gets destroyed, static events, they don't get destroyed automatically. So for this, yep, I do need to reset them manually. But for just singleton static instances, for those, you don't really need to worry too much. How many games have you made? I think it's eight. Yeah, I think this is going to be my ninth game. So yeah, it has already been quite a lot. Although that is in the context of uh, 2012. So yeah, about 10 years, nine games. So yeah, roughly something like that. Okay, so I'm a bit confused as to why this was, I have no idea. Did I forget to save a while ago? I don't know, but was it because I didn't have the parentheses that it was doing something strange with the... Okay, I'm not entirely sure, but anyway, so now the logic is working. That one does say false because the rocket does not exist because, of course, it does not exist. Let me just actually try to make a rocket. Do I have to actually... Yeah, this is the one thing that I really need to change. And let me use my debug menu just to automatically complete uh, the research. So let me do, okay, take out the that pot, just finish the research for the rocket. And actually I'm going to need to spawn the rocket, but might as well see uh, the rocket is actually not this one. 
Any optimization you did here because it's looking smooth? Actually, no. Actually, right now everything is pretty much... Uh, well, I wouldn't say unoptimized. I mean, I did uh, try to make sure that the code was decent, but no, I did not think uh, too much about optimization. Uh, I haven't done that. So, yeah, but it is working quite decently. If I look in the uh, analysis profiler, and uh, yeah, okay, so let's see a random frame. So what is it doing? Okay, so a bunch of thing on the render pipeline, and a bunch of scripts. Yeah, I do got a quite a bit of garbage. Okay, I'll look at that. The chase mine. Yeah, no, it's not the overlap sphere, but something on the chase mine is taking a bunch of garbage. What is it? Yeah, because basically for uh, for actually doing optimization, I haven't worried too much about it. As long as it's playable right now, I very much uh, want the game to be free. No, the final game is going to be a regular paid game, but the demo is free. So if you want, go ahead, go onto Steam right now and play the free demo. Yeah, so this one is actually generating garbage. Why is that? Well, first of all, if I were to optimize this, the first thing I would do would be not to look for a target on every single update. I'm pretty sure I did do, uh, like for example, on the uh, gather resources, on the Dinky behavior for Dinky's gathering resources. Yep, for here, over here, I use a basic timer, just to make sure that it doesn't test on every single thing. So I'm just doing an overlap sphere, but only doing it every X amount of time. So that is, if I were to optimize over here to chase mine, that's what I would do. Instead of looking for target on every single update, I would make it only look at most five times per second. That is more than enough. So, yeah, because over here he's constantly doing that. The array, yeah, this one is, it's probably over here that it's generating all that garbage. So I got a whole bunch of chase mines. So all of those are generating that garbage because they're all constantly grabbing a collided array on every single update. So, yep, I would definitely uh, play around with this, try to fix things. But, yep, for a, for a regular... Hey, you're out there. Hey, how's it going? Uh, yeah, so for a demo, I'm mostly focused on actually implementing things and not... Oh, and Jason Wyman as well. Hey, Jason, how's it going? Nice. Uh, right. Okay, let me just kill the, the zombies just to make sure that they don't actually wipe out my entire base because then I'd have to get a different save and that would be tricky. Uh, all right. Okay, what was I doing? Uh, I need to spawn. What do I need to spawn? Uh, oh, right, that's the other thing that I need to work on afterwards. Right. Let me just go into the HQ. And I wanted to spawn the rocket. Okay, so I guess now I might as well yeah, try to get all of these. Been fun watching while I code. Oh, it's awesome. Are you working on the RPG? Hey, best of luck with that. I hope it's going well. Nice. <laughs> Why do you use a tick system? Uh, I've got a time tick system. It's just a super helpful basic class that just uh, triggers a tick on every 0.2 seconds, so just five times. So any logic that I have that I want to do, instead of being on every update, instead of having to do, instead of having to manually handle a timer, I can just listen to one of these events and do something on this on tick. For example, what am I doing? Like for example. Over here on the tutorial manager, in order to complete this tutorial goal for gather five stone, instead of checking on every single update to check if that uh, crate container has five stone, instead of that, it's really just listening to that only on the time tick system. So on the time tick, so pretty much just five times per second, instead of doing it on every update, it doesn't overlap sphere to find that one and so on. So yeah, the time tick system is super useful in terms of performance and really just not wasting things. And actually that is something that I that script, the time tick system, that is actually something that I did in a video a very long time ago. So here it is, a time tick system. I made two videos on it. This was in 2018. <laughs> and before that, on many of my Steam games, I also used this. So yeah, that's the one great example about writing some good code. You can then reuse it on tons of things, on tons of things many years in the future. So that is super useful. All right. Uh, okay, so let me just get back to work a little bit. All right. Uh, okay, what was I doing? Okay, let me just try to make a thing. So let's see, what do I need to get 
I'm going to need some tier two, some microchips, some greenium. I think I've got some regular greenium. Okay, so I can use this one right here. Let me just place. Okay, I've got way too many but <laughs> way too many objects on this testing scene. That actually makes things quite a bit tricky. So let me just place a bunch more of these. Because <laughs> yeah, this definitely yeah, that is one thing that I do need to improve for the final game is come up with some things to like encourage the player to spread out the base a bit more. Because over here, this is way too busy. There are way too many things. Oh, look at that. Did I just encounter a bug? Maybe. Huh. Was it because of the saves? Okay, so I'll have to figure that out. What happened to the... Okay, that's interesting. So, because I had one of these bots was over here interacting and feeding things into storage. But apparently the bot got tired and decided that it didn't want to do, so I'm not sure. Oh, because it's... Alright, anyways, I'm not sure what happened here. Maybe an issue with the save, so I'll have to look into that. Okay, so again, I get distracted way too much, so I need to get some tier 2 ingots, some microchips, some purple. So let me use my debug menu to spawn some, some purple crystals, some tier 2 ingots. Let me just place those, so not you, you. Place it in there. Some tier 2, and just need what else? Uh, greenium, purple, and just the microchips. So let me grab some microchips. How can I use the line renderer in a network variable? Uh, the answer is you don't use... Well, could you use the line renderer? No, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, basically the answer is the line renderer is really just a list of vector threes. So you would simply synchronize a network list of vector threes. So you can just do the same model behavior so this is not the one this one is also not a model behavior okay so i need one yeah so you can make a private network list of vector three so you can do that for the what you call line renderer point list so you can pretty much just do this just synchronize that list and then on the line renderer you can actually set those i think i use that then i use that on the uh it was a recent video but the, oh right, the track your path over here. I'm pretty sure that I use the line render for the for calculating the thing for the path position list. Then grab a line render. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure the line render does work with a list. Yep, there you go. You set the position count, then you call set positions and so on. So basically, you would synchronize a list of vector threes and then just call set positions, and you would do it just like that. So remember, you don't have to synchronize the entire component. You can just break down the component into into the components that make up that component and just synchronize that data instead of the component itself. So, yep, that's what I would do. Yeah. So about to say it's really cluttered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the computer doesn't even struggle. Yeah, that's uh, it. Definitely still needs optimization work. But yeah, honestly, I'm surprised that right now without having to focus too much on optimization, everything is looking pretty good. So yeah, I'm pretty. Pretty impressed, pretty pleased with the current performance of the demo, so that's nice. All right. How many dollars will the game cost? I don't know. Maybe five, maybe ten, maybe twelve. I don't know. That is something that I still haven't figured out exactly what it's going to be. Uh, okay, so the last thing that I needed was just the microchips, so let me just get those. Uh, get those. Where's the microchips? Oh, electronics, that's it. Uh, where did it spawn? There it is. So right here, place those in there. So let me just link those. So link that one, link that one, put that one, and that one, and craft. And there you go. It does work. Is this your biggest game yet? Uh, no, no. Actually, I just, I just did a a short a while ago. So I don't know how many of you watch shorts, but I actually just did a pretty fun short, which was on the, on how many lines of code I wrote in two weeks, which was the two weeks leading up to this. And the answer was about 16,000, which is quite a lot in two weeks. That's about a thousand lines of code per day. So that's a ton of work, a ton of stuff. But yeah, definitely not my, I'm pretty sure that uh, Battle Royale Tycoon, my previous game, was like, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it was over a hundred thousand. So yeah, that one I would say is still quite a bit more, more complex. So yeah, but this one is still only them. Yeah, it's over 9,000. Definitely is. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, but this is just a demo. So who knows? By the time the, the game is complete, 
Maybe by then this will indeed be my most complex game yet. I'm not sure. We'll see. So it seems sets are correct. It says you have 165 followers. That means 1500, 1600 wishlists. Uh, nope, the wishlists are a bit better than that. They are currently on 2300, I think, or 2400, something like that. One of those two. So, yeah, it is going pretty decently. I mean, my goal is to uh, get up to about uh, at least 5,000 by the release date, and the release date is in about two months, maybe. So, yeah, the goal is to be able to get up to 5,000 all that time, which hopefully should be doable. So, let's see. So far, development is going good, wish lists are going pretty decent. So, yep, definitely keeping up. All right. All right, <clears throat> which one the rocket cost? Uh, actually, cost is something that I still don't know. Read my comment. What comment? Sorry, I'm trying to keep up, but yeah, I don't see any comment from you. Make an open world street racing hack and slash first person, third person with what? Okay. <laughs> I mean, if you're a beginner and you're asking that question, I would say definitely limit your scope. <laughs> Open world street racing, hack and slash, first, second, third person bullet time. I mean, technically that is possible. Uh, but yeah, as a solo dev, especially if you're not very experienced, I would definitely encourage you to limit your, your ideas to something a bit more manageable. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm quite a bit distracted, I have to say, but all right. Uh, okay, so that one... So I was doing all of that just to be able to see if the logic for building the rocket, it is true, and it is indeed working. Okay, so that one has X number of things. <clears throat> I think how much will the game cost? Uh, like I said, still not sure. Perhaps $5, perhaps 10 I'm not sure. Can you show the save system? Yep, the save system is actually super simple. I mean, it's very verbose because right now I'm I'm storing a ton of stuff. But yeah, pretty much all of this is just copy paste for different types of things. So it's really just I got a save object or a list of save objects. And then I just initialize those lists. And I just do a basic physics overlap sphere on the entire world. Just an easy way to cycle through every single object in the world. Then I try to get the component of a bunch of things. I go into that object and I get a save object out of it. So for example, over here, the carry object. These are the vehicles that move back and forth. Over here, this one has a save object, so this one just saves uh, if this one is carrying anything, and it saves the position. So, pretty much very simple, and basically just creates a save object, which in turn is converted into JSON, and then for loading the spawn back together, that once again gets the same save object, then just instantiates the object, and so on. So, the save system is actually something that I covered quite a long time ago, and it's still exactly the same thing that I use nowadays. So saving and loading to a file using JSON. So this video from 2018, this is still exactly how I do things nowadays. So pretty much just create a save object of something. Like for example here, the dinky. The dinky has a save object. It's going to store the position, the hunger mount, whatever dinky behavior is currently active, as well as which house spawned on this dinky. And pretty much just converts that into a save object, which in turn the save system takes all of that, converts all of that into JSON, then saves that into a path. So let's open, just for fun, let's look at a, a save object. So let me go, it's on the other side. The saves, let me see a big one. All right, so there you go. This is the save object, which as you can see, it's also not optimized. So it's storing a ton of wasteful data, but still this is only 36 kilobytes. So this is all pretty basic. Uh, yeah, this is the save object. This is what saves all data. So everything that you saw on that game over there, it's all in here. Did you cipher it? Nope. This is a single player game or a co-op multiplayer game. So yeah, I don't I don't really care if you go up here and you cheat. Like for example, here is the hunger mount. So some random dinky has 134 hunger. I don't really care if you come up here and you say 999 so that it never gets hungry. If that's what you want to do, by all means, go ahead. So yeah. Everything is stored here, everything in nice plain text, doesn't really matter. So, yep, the save system is pretty basic. So if you want to see, definitely go watch that video. It's from 2018, but everything everything that I do nowadays is still pretty much exactly the same. 
Uh, Alright, so basically what I was doing is I was just figuring out on the goal manager, and once again, Tracy Hunt, thanks so much for the super chat, thank you. Uh, so on the goal manager, so over here, so I'm tracking the dinky amount, I'm tracking the rocket amount, uh, I'm tracking how many dinkies are working. So what else do I need? I need to keep the colony safe. So, yeah, that is the one that is going to be quite tricky. Because I got to figure out how do I define... Uh, uh, was the zombie spawner? What did I call it? The zombie spawner. Uh, I guess I could have like a like a private float last time attack. I could have something like this. And then up here on this one, I could do uh, set last time attack. And then I could do last time attack equals time dot time. All right, so then I could go onto the zombie and when the zombie attacks something, so moving to attack Dinky and whenever you attack a Dinky, go into the target Dinky and you deal damage. So up here, I could go into the zombie spawner. Did I make an instance? I did. So let's call the uh, set last time attack. So with that, that would... Okay, so yeah, I do think like this it would work. So that defines the last time attack. All right, then a public float, get time since last attack. Oh, great, make a course. Yeah, I've got plenty of courses. And I'd love to make another one, but <laughs> I'd love to make another one. At the same time, I'd love to work on this game, so yeah. There are so many things that I'd love to do, if only I could find the time. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, you get the time. Because time.time... Oh, this is the beginning of this frame, so this is not what I want. Uh, it's the real time since startup. Yeah, that's what I want. Uh, Alright, so I get the time since the last attack. And this, I think, is going to be in seconds. So, let me go into the goal manager. And let's go into the zombie spawner instance. Get time since last attack, float for the time since last attack. And I get that one, just do a debug.log on the time, on the time since the last attack. Just get this one. Okay. Won't that continue even when paused? Actually, that's a good question. Because I don't know if time dot... That's actually a very good question because I don't know if this one stops on... Because I thought there were two of them. Yeah, I thought one was on Delta time and one was not. Okay, so let's figure that out. That is actually super simple to figure out. So let me just go, yeah, just over here and let's go on to the time tick. So just do a debug.log on the time, real time since startup. And let's see if that one, where's my thing? Real time will continue, time will pause. Yeah, but the time was, so what kind of times do you have? Real time since startup. Yeah, but the time, oh, the time at the beginning of this frame. Okay, yeah. Oh, it was the in scale time. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Okay, so that's what I was thinking. So yeah, I do think real time might stop. So I do think it should probably be, uh, okay, so over here, it's actually not spawning. So let me just continue. Uh, let's see that one. Okay, 32, 33, 34, and I pause. All right, it's not, but now if I unpause, that code is going to run. Yeah, 38, okay. So that one does not get impacted. So I cannot use that one. But yeah, so I think I was, I was correct in the beginning. So it is time dot time. So with that one, it should actually say, now that one should stop since apparently it's the unscaled time. That's the one that I was confusing with. All right. Uh, so let's go there, continue. And let's see, okay, three seconds, four seconds. Ooh, actually, yeah, that is something that I, yeah, I definitely need to update that on start, otherwise it's going to be messed up, but yeah. Anyway, okay, so pause on 14, wait a few seconds, wait a few seconds. 
Unpause, and now it's inside the scene. Okay, awesome, cool. All right, so that works. Test message, yeah, test successful. <laughs> All right, okay, so that work. Love your videos, ah, that's awesome. I'm glad you're watching them, glad you like them. Hey there, hey Paulo, how's it going? Uh, Alright, so basically I just need to set... Ooh, right, yeah, I was thinking about setting this on the beginning, but... No, I also gotta, I also gotta save this, hmm. Alright, so I was thinking, I mean, I can probably put it over here on the awake just to fix things a little bit, but... Right, yeah, anyway, so I do think this does work. So, okay, let me just uh, see if the time since the last attack, if that one is working, which should be working, so let's ignore the time.time .time over there. Because I'm ter I saved, but the character didn't update. Uh, that part has a manual thing, so let me just, let me just manually try to see if there's any new characters. Uh, okay, right, let me try to see that one. If there's any new characters, that one takes a little bit. Uh, right, all of those are validated. There's another one, let me validate it. Shh, shh, shh. Any more? Uh, right, there was one that was validated, but who was saying that oh boy i've got way too many way too many tabs artem uh right uh i do see yours and yours is validated but you need to go into the user account page and you need to link your youtube account otherwise the overlay over here doesn't know uh which account belongs to you so basically you need to go onto your user page on the website and you need to click over here in order to link your YouTube account. Then the uh, overlay over here won't be able to know which character belongs to you. And then it will apply the custom thing. So yeah, just go ahead and do that. And it should work. Game looks amazing. Oh, it's awesome. Thank you. I hope you like it. Yeah, so far things have been quite interesting. All right. Okay, so let me see the time since the last attack. So let me go into single player and uh, yeah, continue. And all right, so let's see. So that one is going to start from zero. Okay, I'm going to need to save that. Sure, but yeah. All right, so time since last attack, let me spawn a zombie just to see if this is going to work. Actually, I'm probably going to need to spawn multiple zombie, or let me just just throw one dinky directly onto the zombie. That's a bit sadistic. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, just for testing, you're gonna be sacrificed. <laughs> Okay, sorry. But yep, it did work. So it was over there on 26. And as soon as he hit, he reset the timer. Okay, so that's good. So that's basically how I'm going to keep the colony safe. So if it goes for, I don't know, maybe three minutes. So if it goes for three minutes without a single attack, then continues, uh, then considers that the colony is indeed safe. All right. Okay, so with that, honestly, the goals are pretty much all working, I think. So let me just make a visual for that so let's see if it works okay so let's make a nice goal visual I'm just going to 2d mode 350 RTX isn't good for unity uh, as always when it comes to hardware the answer is depends on what kinds of games you want to make if you want to make simple games then pretty much anything is going to work so yeah a 3050 if you're trying to make a giant open world game with super high quality textures then maybe it won't be enough but if you're making a regular game then it probably will be enough uh, for the goals you want why did I is this inside something it isn't inside anything right nope okay so I'm not sure I'm just put it like oh crap uh, okay so for all of these let me just put them all just like that because I don't want you to scale and let me scale that one that goes Kind of okay, exactly. That's what I want. And let me also add my super useful component to reset the position on the UI. So, this is why I have all of my UI windows all spread over the place 
visually I can position them and this way I can easily move around and interact with any of these windows and all of them have this component which pretty much just goes and resets the anchor position and the size delta so pretty much just sets all of these values on zero so as soon as the game starts all of them go into the canvas so just super useful for actually developing the game so I can move things to the side and I can easily play with them all right so on this one on the goals UI uh, it's going to be a bit tricky how am I going to uh, how am I going to fit such information over here that's the part that's going to be quite tricky uh, trying to think uh, do I do it text-based okay yeah I think the easiest way is really just do it text-based and then maybe I'll swap for something a bit more visually interesting so for now okay for now, let me just make the basic for the goals UI, something like that. Always a pain when you have one on top of the other. Yep, it is. <laughs> and it's because that pain, that annoyance, that annoyed me for so long that I finally decided, okay, I need something something better. And that's how I come up with this method of move them to the side and during runtime, put them back where they should. So, yeah. Uh, all right, so over here, I'm going to... Oh, crap, my, my to-do list is over there. Uh... So I'm going to need a serialized field for a private text mesh pro UGUI for the text mesh, just something like that. Uh, all right, so I'm going to I pretty much just write. So it's this one, right? So this one is the the uh, title text. This one goals text. This one just text. Yeah, that doesn't matter. All right, so let's put the goals text. Did I not? How to resize the rec transform by dragging the button. By dragging the button? What button? You mean click and drag? For that you need to do a bunch of math. So I did a... Uh, uh, what did I do on the drag and drop? Yeah, basically you need to do, yeah, drag and drop windows. So basically you need to capture the, you need to put a button on the corner, something that you want to click and then drag. So basically you need to listen to a click on that, then you need to be able to do some math in order to figure out what position, how you're going to modify the width, the height and so on. So look into that video to see how you can click on something. And then for the map, the math for resizing, you can look at the tooltip, which just so happens this tooltip that I made in this tutorial in 2020, I'm actually using this in the game. So for the various uh, tooltip, I'm actually using quite a lot of things that I've covered in a bunch of videos, which is, it's always fun. So yeah, if I go into the main menu and if I continue, if I go into one of these, look at that, that tooltip over there, that one that automatically scales depending on what text there is. Yep, this tooltip is exactly the same thing that I covered in this video in 2020. So here I am, uh, what is it, three years later, reusing the exact same code in a game. So that is really awesome. So yeah, that is the, the power of writing good clean code and doing tons of things is that you can then easily reuse them in lots of different places. Uh, all right, so let me get my goals over there. And okay, so I've got the goal text mesh. And then I'm not going to do it on update, but for now, let's go text mesh text. And I need to figure out how am I going to... Okay, so I need a clone, then the dinky amount by dinky. So I'm going to need to ask the goal manager. Okay, so on this one, let's make a goal manager. A instance with a get and a private set. And up here on private void awake, let's set instance equals this. Okay. So then here, goal manager, the instance, and I'm going to need to ask. So uh, public int get dinky amount and a public int get dinky amount total. Total. Disable something on canvas instead of making a custom script. Disable. Uh, all right, so 
for the dinky amount, yeah, I'm just going to return the dinky amount. So just return that one. Dinky amount total, let's return 30. So this is going to be whatever is the final goal on the demo. Then what are the things am I going to need? So is rocket built? So public ball is rocket built. I'm going to need to ask this one for all of this. So is rocket built? Is really just, yeah, just going to test if that one is not null. So just return that one. Okay, the other goal, so uh, public uh, int get dinky working amount. And basically I'm just going to get to the dinky list and figure out which ones are working. And then I'm going to return this right here. So that returns the dinky's working. And is colony safe? So public float get last uh attack timer return going to the zombie spawner instance get last get time since the last attack okay so i think with that i've got a bunch of these time is time is double because time will be overflowing if you play for several days i don't think anyone's gonna i mean because technically that is true technically that will overflow but what is the float maximum? Isn't like 4 billion? <laughs> so how how much are 4 billion seconds? So 4 billion seconds in days. 46,000 days. Okay, am I wrong? Isn't that 4 billion? Because that seems way too big. <laughs> but yeah, either way, the maximum float in terms of seconds, that is going to be huge. So, so yeah, I don't think time as double is going to be... A necessity but yeah maybe i'll add it just because i mean storing a double or a float doesn't really matter too much uh but yeah their black point at the left bottom of your screen there's a black point what black point all right uh in this two billion float use the same but with floating points yeah yeah, it looks accuracy, but I mean, if it's something, oh, you're talking about the microphone over here. Yeah, this is the microphone. <laughs> yeah, the tiny black dot. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it looks per it loses precision, but difference between I don't know 0 0.1 and 0 0.9 seconds that really does not does not worry too much. You need a way to cancel actions. Yep, there is a way. There is a way. Why no dark mode? Because dark mode burns my eyes. That's pretty much it. Uh, all right, okay, so over here, so let me go, so clone uh, the 30 dinky, so I'm going to, oh, because I'm using that one, right, uh, right. So here plus that one dot get the dinky amount plus get the dinky amount total. Okay, so that is going to be the thing yeah in the end i'm not going to end up doing this in with text but yeah for now text should be fine so let me just see that okay so then then build rockets and then i can go into the goal manager instance so is rocket built if so then i'm going to return done if not, then I'm going to return nothing. Okay. And then a new line. I need to put this inside a something. Okay. So the next one is the fully automate colony. So fully automate the colony. And then let me go into the goal manager instance. Get the dinky working amount. Ah, okay, so this is going to be tricky. Zoom out would be nice. Yep, camera controls are definitely uh, something that I would like. Yeah, that is definitely something that I want to implement. Just didn't get time to do it over here, but yep. What kind of approach would you use for storing multiple game object world position? JSON, a good idea for lots of game objects? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, it all depends on what you're trying to say, but over here for my, for my dinkies, for example, all of them, they're storing the position. So I can have up to like 50 dinkies, wherever. And yeah, it's all just storing a vector three that stores perfectly fine in a thing. A while ago, I, I showed the, uh, the, uh, the save file, which has all of those positions. So if I go into saves, I open up one of these, 
And there you go, look at that. Position, here is the X, here is the Y, and here is the Z. So here's a Vector3 converted into JSON. So yep, you can definitely store as many of these as you want. I mean, this looks like a pretty big file, and it is a pretty big game, quite a bit of data, but in reality, it's only 30 kilobytes, and of course, you could obviously optimize this by quite a lot, but yeah, uh, right now, 30 kilobytes for a save file, that is really not something that I'm worried about, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you want to store positions, yep, JSON works perfectly fine for storing quite a lot of them. Uh, okay, so over here, let me actually... Uh, I'm trying to think of how am I going to do this. Um, do a string fully automate colony. So I think like this, it's going to be a bit better because on the dinky amount, this one, if this one is bigger than zero, then let's go into this one and plus equals slash n and say, Five. I think he's working. So that should not be like that. Okay, so that is going to be the fully automated colony. Then a new line. And finally, the last one is just keep colony safe. Uh, and then I'm going to go into that one. Yeah, let's do a string again. So keep, keep the colony safe. Yeah, working with strings here, not very good, but for now, just to get it working. So keep colony save, then let me go into the goal manager, the instance, and get the, what did I call, the last attack timer. Uh, I'm trying to think, the logic should not be over here on the UI. How can you fit all those physics objects without like? I mean, I haven't done anything specific, so it's really just... Uh, Unity rigid bodies and the way their physics system works. So yeah, it could definitely be optimized quite a lot, but yeah, for now, like that. Make how to customize buttons UI like resize or change position on the screen like mobile. Player have the option to change the button. I mean, that is mostly just, it's really just modifying the, the scale of the object. So you can access the rec transform, you can modify the position, the anchor, the width, so you can modify the size down. So that was what I was doing a while ago on this script, the reset position script. This grow goes into the rec transform and grabs the anchor position and the size delta. So yeah, that's pretty much what you would do in terms of logic. It's not complex. It's just a ton of work. You'd have to define like, like for example, so you would have like a switch on some kind of private enum for the UI, UI size, ah, UI size, and you have small, small, medium, and large. You would have something like this. And then you would do a UI size, UI size, something like this. And you would do a switch on the UI size. In case it is UI size dot small, case this, you would go into the right transform and set the size delta to, I don't know, something like maybe on small, you've got 30 by 30. Then on something like a medium, you would have perhaps 50 by 50. And this one you would have 100 by 100. So that's pretty much what you would do. You just define the sizes, then just go into rec transform, modify the size delta, maybe also modify the anchor position. So yeah, in terms of logic, it is pretty simple. It's just quite uh, quite verbose to write all this code. So I would probably make a mono behavior component, something to hold on data. So for saying, okay, so this component, when it's small, it should be on this size, when it's medium, it should be on this one, this one, so on. So for that, you could actually just make a serialized field of a private vector two for the small size and a medium size and so on. Then you could set this in the editor, something like that. So yeah, so yeah, in terms of doing that, it's uh, pretty simple, just takes quite a bit of work. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, right. So what I was doing, uh, I was on the on the goals UI. Okay. Get the last stack timer. So public bowl is colony safe. Uh, so private, uh, private float. 
sure. Okay, maybe a constant? Eh, I don't know, put it here. So private mode, so colony safe timer. So get the colony safe timer, and let's say the colony is safe after 10 seconds. Just make it easier to test. Is colony safe? So return, get the last attack timer. If it is bigger, then is call then the get colony safe timer. If so, then the colony is safe. Uh, okay, so over here, so for the keep the colony safe. Okay, so is colony safe? So if it is safe, then let's go into this one and just do plus equals safe. Uh, if not, then I'm going to go into that one and add. Actually, let me add a new line. Last attack. Then go into the goal manager instance. Get the last attack timer, and this one is going to need a two string. And I always forget the format for the two string. Is it pound two? No, I think it's n two or f two. Yeah, I think it's f two. Or no, because that's actually I don't want that. Yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, really just round to end. F dot round to end. Yeah, that is going to be enough. So let's tack on something and then I print. So keep colony safe, just print down. Okay, so I think that is going to be the basic text. Okay, and then launch into space. Okay, let me just add that one. So just over here, just drop launch into space. Okay. Uh, all right, so I do think the logic should be working. All right. <clears throat> uh, okay, so this one should be updating that one. The only thing is this one was moving quite a bit. Wasn't it? I think it was. Okay, that's a bit strange. The position of the UI, because it was maybe four instead of round, so it's more. Like, yeah, I I guess. Uh, why is this one showing up in there? Did I? How did I mess up the? Okay, now that's a bit confusing. Oh, never mind, because the scale. Right, yeah, I modified the scale because it was way too big. Yeah, with scale like that, it's going to overlap the control, so I'm going to need to modify the controls a little bit. Yeah, why aren't you using string formatting with the string interpolation thing? Uh, the answer is simply just because uh, by the time that I learned about that one, I'm already so used to using just the uh, regular plus <laughs> adding something. So yeah, the answer is really just just uh, being way too used. Uh, just using that for way too long, that is really the only answer. So if you like that, by all means use string interpolation because it is quite a bit easier. Uh, okay, so I'm trying to figure... Ah, crap. Yeah, never mind about that. Ah! Now I'm clicking everywhere. Uh, Alright, so that is way too big, but I don't care. Let's just see if it is working. Okay, so let's go back outside. Let's go in. Let's continue. And let's see. Alright, clone 7 out of 30. Build rocket done. Fully automate colony. And it is apparently fully automated. But if I tell one of these to feed some dinkies, so let's go do something, start the other, and there you go, one dinky is working. Okay, so the logic is working, which is all that matters. I'm going to obviously need to modify the actual uh, logic. This is not supposed to be in text, but yep, that is pretty much it. So for the, let's just add some colors just for fun. Uh, so red, green, blue, so color and color. And over here for color equals, uh, let me get an orange. So let me figure out some color over here. We go into one of these, just pick up some kind of like an orange red. Yeah, something like this is a good color. Okay, so let's put down, so that's the color for the last attack. Color. And for dinkies working, let me do the same thing. So if there are dinkies working, you do that. And uh, if not, let me just, yeah, because that one puts a, right, because yeah, I'm doing that one. 
was equals the done safe done something. So fully automate the colony, just uh, yep, just like that. So keep the colony safe. So keep it safe, build the rocket and so on and get the dinky amount. It's that one and build the rocket and done. Let me just <clears throat> just do that. Just putting some colony just a bit of fun. Just in case some of you don't know, you can use uh, tags in your text, which is a nice and easy way to add a little bit of polish to the text without having to make anything special. You can just include rich text tags and everything works. And a super chat. Thank you, Rafael. Hey, thank you. Have you seen the game Captains of Industry? Uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen of it, but I haven't, uh, I haven't played it. But yeah, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I saw that one in one of my, one of my Oh, hey, look at that. There's my... Is that my stream? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> so it is working. That's great. Uh, yeah, is that the one with pixels or something? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I, I saw this one. Oh, it's this one. Okay, yeah. I thought it was another one that has a bunch of voxels and things. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is the one where you can mine everywhere. Yeah, I remember seeing this one when it came out. 31 of May, 22. Yeah, quite a while ago. Uh, they have very interesting terrain mechanics that I can't figure out. Uh, well, for that is really going to depend on what kind of terrain system you're using. I do know that Unity's terrain system has quite a few limitations. So, yeah, only now I notice that apparently my camera is... <laughs> yeah, only now I notice that the camera over here, the green screen, isn't... All right. Yeah, only now I noticed that, but anyways, sure, fine. So that one is a little bit like that. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, so that is going to very much depend on what kind of terrain system you're using. Because, yeah, do they dig all of this? Because, yeah, digging terrain in real time, that is actually something that is quite complex. So, yeah, I would assume they're using something custom rather than the uh, built-in... Unity, because I'm pretty sure this is a Unity game, but yeah. Yeah, for that, it even looks like they've got some kind of voxel grid-based terrain. The way the terrain is adding in and decreasing seems to be voxel-based. So, yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe you make a voxelized terrain and pretty much just destroy each chunk at a time. So, yeah, that's definitely one... Yeah, look at that. All the levels are very much individualized so they're not very much analog they're either got a hole or don't have a hole that's pretty much it so but yeah that that is pretty much going to depend on what kind of yeah because even the even the buildings seem to be on like a 3d voxel grid so yeah if i had to guess i would say that i would say the terrain and the entire world has some kind of 3d grid which they can either put some dirt or put nothing on it so yep that pretty much seems to be like that so yeah that that's where I would start my research is how to make some voxel uh, terrain thing with quite a bit of, with some very good performance, which actually right now with dots having just hit 1.0, that would be the perfect thing for doing something like this. I mean, if you've got a large world using dots, using a data oriented approach for storing the, the terrain, being able to cut it down and build it up, that would definitely be my approach. So yeah. Yeah, who knows? I mean, I would love to do some research on on dots and doing a terrain system kind of like this could be a fun challenge. So yeah, thanks for the tip. That is really interesting, yeah. Yeah, that's part of the reason why I like to uh, keep doing my series on trying to find uh, interesting new releases made with Unity. It's really just to see what can be done with the engine. Oh, look at that, a zombie just spawned. Oh, look at that, that one is terrified because of zombie. Uh, yeah, so basically checking those Checking new releases is really great to be able to see what other people have done with the engine. Ah, crap, you go. Shh, shh, okay. Just punch them all. Uh, all right. So, yeah, that one is working. So, build the rocket, done, fully automate, keep the colony safe. And, yeah, I guess the only thing is... Yeah, right, for the keep the colony safe. Uh, for that one... If my game make 100, did Unity take $30? Unity doesn't take a uh, commission on anything. So are you asking about Steam? Because yes, in that case, yes. If you make 
a hundred bucks of gross revenue on Steam, then Steam does indeed take 30%, but Unity doesn't take anything, so you can make whatever you want, and, you know. Oh, you already mentioned that Dots 1.0 has a memory leak. Really? <laughs> well, that's tricky. <laughs> that is definitely going to erase any performance benefits. <laughs> yeah, that would be quite tricky. Advanced C-Sharp series. I mean, if you want advanced, my turn-based strategy course, I'm really proud of that course. I really think it's a great one. really goes for more intermediate users. So if you're more on the intermediate level, I would say definitely look into that one. Because, yeah, in terms of C-Sharp, I don't have anything just on C-Sharp. But, yeah, C-Sharp coupled with the game, that would be my advice. Do you use the new input system? and Odin in your games. I do use the new input system, although I do it just like I covered in my in my free course, which is first I start by just using the input manager, which is exactly what I'm using here. Over here, this game, which is right now in the alpha demo stage, this one is still just using the input manager. Then at some point, I'm going to refactor into using the new input system. So, yep, I start with the input manager, then eventually I, I move up. And in terms of Odin, uh, on this game, I haven't really had a reason to use it because it doesn't really have way too much that needs. I just made a simple editor script just once, but yeah, for the most part, on this one, doesn't really... I've got tons of sort of small objects, so maybe it would be useful to use Odin to make a tool to, like, make them. But even though I've got a ton of script small objects, these were all very much made slowly over time. So there never was a point when I'm like, okay, so I need to build, like, 50 script small objects. So yeah, that didn't really happen. So I didn't really have a need for a tool to make that part super easy to add. So yeah, right now I'm using the input manager, but I won't be using the input system. And in terms of Odin, I don't know, maybe if I get to a point where I need, uh, where I need to do a ton of things, maybe, but yeah. All right. <clears throat> uh, okay, so. Yeah, so basically, just with this, it is working just on the Keep Colony Safe. The one thing that I do want to uh, check is Keep Colony Safe is meant to be safe automatically. It is not meant to be... So let me just pause this just so this doesn't save anything. Um, so the thing with this one is that it's meant to be automatic. Because basically over here, I'm testing for the time since the last attack. But... But I want to make sure that the defense is automatic. That's basically what I want to do. I want to, to encourage the player to make the colony fully self-sustainable, including with defense. So the player is not meant to actually attack anything. So I need to keep track of... Hmm. Okay, so let me think. Uh, so I need like a... Yeah, I guess I just need another one. So I got the last time attack. Uh, so this is the last zombie time attack. And then I've got another one for the last player time attack. Okay. Then on this one, set last zombie time attack. Okay. And then I'm going to have one for the set last for the player time attack. So the last player time attack because basically I need oh now that's actually tricky because the player can actually attack with quite a bit of things Familiar with the factory pattern I'm familiar with it but I always forget about it so yeah I don't know it off the top of my head for creating instances of class script more objects seem similar better than the basic constructor uh, yeah I know of the factory pattern but I've never actually used it uh, and nowadays, I really don't normally use the base constructor. So for script object, like for example, my carry object SO, uh, where's the definition? So here it is. I just make a script object with a create asset menu. So I don't even use any, I don't use anything special for creating it. So I just go over here into one of these, go into create, and here are all my script objects. So if I want to make a tool carry object, I just make one of these. If I want to make a new tech, so this is the research, I just do one of these or new crafting recipe and so on. So yeah, I've never really used the factory pattern. I know it's interesting and sometimes useful, but yeah. Stream dying, is it dying? 
it's saying excellent connection, so apparently it's what is dying is my throat. <laughs> so yeah, that's normal. And I'm running out of water, so yeah. <clears throat> okay, let me just uh, try to see this. I'm quite a bit distracted today, I have to say. <laughs> Doing live streams is fun, but it definitely is quite physically demanding, and it does take uh, does make me quite a bit less productive. <laughs> what network SDK are you using? I'm using Netcode for Game Objects. So basically, the idea why I started making this game was because I was making my free multiplayer course where I use netcode for game objects to make a multiplayer game and I really enjoyed it so that is why I decided to make this game I really wanted to make something in multiplayer so yep and so far it has been very good I've been using it and I had a few strange very random issues but for the most part it has been very good very nice yeah completing unity course on kitchen chaos hey good luck yeah that's awesome yeah I hope you learn a lot yeah that course has been really nice a lot of people have really enjoyed it so yeah, I'm glad people are enjoying it. <laughs> Pop your head with water. Yeah, that's a... I really prefer this bottle as opposed to a twisty thing. So that is so much more efficient. Super easy to open and close. Real nice. Okay. So, the player last time attack. So basically, I just need to go... And once again, Rafael, thanks so much for the super chat. I hope my answer helped. So, look into voxels, perhaps with dots. And that's basically how I would try it. I think that would be pretty good. Unity company isn't near you. Uh, I'm pretty sure Unity does not have offices over here in Portugal, so nope. I wonder what is the closest one. Do they have one in Spain? I don't think so. So I think the closest would probably be their offices in either London or Berlin. I'm not sure which one is, is closer, so yeah. And Unite is going to be in Amsterdam this year, so that's going to be fun, yeah. I hope that I'll be able to attend. So that should be that should be interesting. Uh, all right. Okay. So uh, now I'm just trying to figure out how do I. Okay. So that's actually on the zombie. I'm trying to remember how do I handle the damage. It's over here. So for taking damage, yeah, because I got a damage, but I don't have. Oh right, it's on the can interact. So on try interact. This is the one that is going to... All right, because this is one of the first ones. Okay. Hey, yeah, caught a stream. Yeah, a random stream. <laughs> Speak Portuguese. Yep. I mean, I'm right here. Born here, so yep. Even though, honestly, my brain works more in English than it does in Portuguese. But yeah, I do. I pretty much only use Portuguese when, when in real life. <laughs> so like going to gym, talking to someone... Talking to a friend, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the only time that I use Portuguese. Everything else, always with English. Uh, okay, so on the try to interact, I'm just trying to see, am I going to do it here or on the other one? And I guess this is always going to run on the server, so... But on the server, I don't have that. Okay, so this is a bit tricky. Hmm... Okay, so that's a bit tricky. But actually, no, because, yeah, I'm trying to think. Okay, so I interact in order to deal damage to the zombies. But, yeah, right, the only one that ever uses this, the dinkies are never going to attack the zombies, and the automated bots, those are also not going to attack the zombies. So, yeah, sure. So I think in here, on this server IPC, I can just go into the zombie spawner, the instance, and set the last player time attack because this one is only ever going to be called for the thing. Shout out, please. You want me to shout? <laughs> I don't think my voice can handle shouting. You're in Azores or mainland? I'm in mainland. You're in Lisbon. So, yeah. How do you plan to finance your game in the long term? Can't happen that the Unity services costs eat up your income at some point. Uh, not really. I mean, so far, the demo has gone pretty decently. I think I've had like. 1500 people playing the demo something like that and basically it is still well within the uh, free tier so Yeah, so far with a bunch of people playing on relay a bunch of people using the lobby and uh, I'm still on the on the free tier so I still don't have to pay one cent So I don't think that is going to be an issue the free tiers on the unity gaming services tools those three tiers are I would say pre, -gen uh, pre generous so yep, that is 
So yeah, basically, I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to keep using them, and I do think they won't work quite well. Okay. So set the last player time attack. Okay, get time since the last zombie attack, and then I need another one for get time since the last player attack. So the last player attack. And basically on the goals, on the goal manager, so the last... So, so in order to define if the colony is safe, I need to see both of them, right? So get the last zombie attack timer, if it is bigger than that one, and the get the last player attack timer. And this one is going to be pretty much the exact same thing. So get the last player attack timer. So get time since last player attack. So if that one is also under the get colony save timer or not under, if that one is above. If so, then that means it has been more than 10 seconds since either a zombie attack or a player attacked the zombie. So if I do that, then yeah, I do think that's the logic for getting the colony safe. Okay, great. Been enjoying Tears of the Kingdom. I was <laughs> until I, until like four weeks ago when I started really uh, sprinting to get the demo done in time. And since then I haven't touched the game yet. So yeah, now, now that the festival is over, which should be over right now at 6 p.m. Is it over? Uh, where's my, where's my thing? Store.steampower.com. Is the festival over? Okay, so apparently the festival is already over. So yeah, now that the festival is over, the sprint pretty much ends. So hopefully for the rest of this week, I can get back to uh, doing it a bit more calm. Hey, look at that. The live stream is still there. That's fun. Uh, yeah. Oh, and by the way, I'm not uh, removing the demo. So if you want to see the updates that I've been seeing, I'm going to try to push another update today. So yeah, if you want to see that, uh, definitely I'm going to leave the demo up, so feel free to download it and go ahead and add it to your wish list because that really does help. Uh, all right, so let me just quickly uh, test out what I was doing. So, let's say, okay, so one, two, three, four, five seconds, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and yep, now the colony is safe. Okay, so now let me spawn a zombie, so let me spawn a zombie. And once again, let me sacrifice one of these dinkies, so sorry about that, but okay, so let's go find the zombie, there it is, throw him there, okay, so let's see that one, still safe, now let's attack in one second, okay. So now it's going to be like that, okay, now if I punch him, it should actually reset that, so if I reset, and nope, oh, nope, but yes, yeah, exactly, because now it's going above 10, 12, so now it's going to say safe. Okay, now it says save and I punch him and still says that. Okay, so I just got to update the timer, but yeah, pretty much that does work. Don't have any mines. I need to make some mines. Uh, okay, so yeah, if I attack him, okay, that's good. That means that resets the timer, which is good. So right now I've got the logic in order to be able to ensure that the colony is self-sustaining. So if I attack a zombie, it becomes unsafe. If a zombie attacks a dinky, it becomes unsafe. So that's great. That's exactly the logic that I want. I uh, just need to go there on the, uh, let me go into goals UI. So on the keep colony safe, uh, less attack. Do I pick the smallest or the biggest? The smallest, right? Yeah, I think it is the smallest. So mathf.min, pick the smallest between the get last zombie attack timer and get the last player attack timer. So pick the smallest of those, and yep, that's time. All right, so that's the logic working. All right, I'm out of water, so just gonna be a little bit. <clears throat> Are there classes for dinkies in the game? Uh, you mean like different abilities? Uh, not really, although uh, they all do different things. So I can expect, they, I can tell them to do all kinds of things, so I can tell a dinky to follow me which I think is a, a pretty fun thing. So like, for example, if I wanted to make a new thing, I can go up, tell him, hey, carry some apples and let's go and build a brand new outpost over on this side. So I can tell him to follow me, which is pretty fun. 
I can tell them to fit some dinkies, add power, interact with machines, get resource nodes, grab objects, or move some crates. So, yep, they can do quite a lot of things. So, not really classes, they're all just one dinky, but they can do all kinds of things. And look at that, one dinky working, because they cannot be following me. So let's put this one back into idle. And yep, then, now the colony is fully automated. Okay. <clears throat> C sharp string interpolation. Yeah, I know. I just never, I just never got used to that. So I just do close at the plus. That just feels uh, very automatic for me. Very automatic to me by now. Yeah. Does the player take damage from enemies like in Factorio? Uh, nope. For uh, I really wanted to focus more on actually damaging Dinky, so you'll like have to protect them. But I don't know. That's one of those. Design questions that really the answer only comes after playtesting, so who knows, maybe. Didn't I have some mines over here? No, 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 no. Go away. All right, so yeah, it's the combat that obviously still needs quite a bit of work. I still need to make uh, actual spawn points for where the zombies are going to come from. I think that is going to be much better in order to make it... Okay, like for example, let's do keep the colony safe. So if I make a bunch of let me spawn a few uh let me spawn a bunch of chase mines and let me also spawn a zombie so like for example that one says save so if i punch that one it is going to suddenly become unsafe but if i take a mine and if he gets killed either with the mine or with the tower that one should not reset so there it goes boom and yep it does not reset all right awesome <clears throat> so the logic does work okay so i just need to Figure out, play around with the visuals well a little bit, but yep. Have multiple courses. Which one do you recommend most for someone that wants to make type of games you are making? Uh, that really depends on your skill set, where you are. But I would recommend starting with my free complete course. So this one is completely free. You can watch it on YouTube. It's 10 hours long. So if you're a beginner, I would say start with that one. And if you're more of an advanced user, I would recommend the turn-based strategy course. This one goes on making quite a bit more complex game, so it covers lots of more advanced things. So it's a game kind of like XCOM, so you start, you play in a grid, you do all kinds of things, you've got all kinds of actions, you've got enemies, grenades, things, ragdolls. It's a pretty fun game, definitely involves quite a lot more complexity. So if you're a more advanced user, maybe look into this course, but if you're a beginner, then just start with my free course. Just that one will teach you quite a lot. Okay. <clears throat> time I do an emoji, it eats the rest of my text. <laughs> Doesn't? You mean over here on my overlay? Because, yeah, the uh, the uh, thing over here, Text Mesh Pro, this one probably does not recognize emojis, so yeah. Which one of your work, Code Monkey? Oh, that's awesome. Start my own com gaming company and build games. That is cool. Nice. I see you have a webcam now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Always imagining this little monkey talking super fast. <laughs> Yep, I am human. I am indeed human. <laughs> All right, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching the videos. I'm glad. I'm glad they've been useful to you. Uh, okay, so let me just figure out just the visuals in that, and and actually the rocket. That one is not done. Only now I realize how to make the dark outlines and all the objects. That is, I'm using the Quibbly anime shaders and tools. So if you want, this is the exact asset that I'm using in the game in order to make it look. Quite interesting, and this asset also has a bunch of outlines. Yeah. Went through your turn-based strategy course, it was a huge help. Onto a card game based off the grid system. Oh, nice. A lot of ideas and implement. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, congrats on completing the course and using it to make something original. Yeah, congrats. That is really awesome. Nice. Managed to get me and my entire friend group into game development. Oh, that is awesome. That is really cool. <laughs> I love seeing those kinds of comments. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad the videos helped. <laughs> Uh, all right. Okay. So let me just let me just visually work on that, and yeah, then it's probably gonna be it because my voice is already quite a bit messed up. It's already past six p.m. So I still gotta clean up a bunch of things. So yeah. Uh, okay. So let me just let me go figure that out and just play with the visual a little bit. So let me go into the goals UI. So I gotta scale it down by a little bit. Yeah, this is actually gonna be quite tricky, yeah, because I was making it 70 by 70. Uh no, actually for the cause can I 
move the next I got the controls over here but the controls can definitely move a little bit okay so I think I just move the controls a little bit just over here if it's on 20 is this still readable yeah it's still readable all right so yeah let's put just on 18 okay right now obviously I'm going to come up with a proper thing but for now okay so for now put it with 18 let me just well let me first just copy the controls UI so copy this component stop playing let me go into the controls UI let me paste this component values and for the other one for the goals UI for the goals text let's put it what did I put 18 something like that put check marks in front yeah that's that's good I do think text mesh pro does support some emojis but I don't know how many so yeah we'll see but um yeah, let me just make it just a little bit smaller on that one, and yeah. Okay, but actually, I still need to figure out how am I going to... Because that one says build rocket, but that is actually not true. Yeah, the rocket is still one part that is not fully built. Because yeah, I still I made all the logic, but I haven't yet handled all the costs, all the, all the various things. Uh, but the stage... Yeah, that's it. He goes, I do think that it already works, but, uh, okay, so let's go here. So public bull is rocket fully built. Just return if the stage equals the, didn't I call it stage? What did I call it? Yeah, I called it stage. Did I not save the stage? Stage dot done. Did I not? Oh, right, because I put it stage. It's a network variable. Ah, crap. Let's go down. Uh, the stage dot value, if that one is done, so the rocket is fully built. So on the goal manager, so is rocket built? That one, if that one is not null, and rocket, go in the rocket base, uh, rocket base dot instance dot is the rocket fully built. If so, it is fully built. If not, then I need to build it. Okay. All right, so yeah, that should be working, except, yeah, the rocket still does not have any cost, so I still need to add the world UI and so on. <clears throat> Horizontal vertical grid layout to auto size for your UI. Uh, yeah, I am using those in quite a few places, but yeah. Uh, right now for the UI, I'm really just looking for the most basic thing possible. Right now, polishing the UI isn't really something that I'm worried too much about. I'm just, first of all, focus on getting everything working, and then I'll focus on actually polishing things. Okay, so build rocket now, that one does not say that it's done, because it's not done. And yeah, I need to, once again, the UI, this needs to be updated, because right now it doesn't say what are the costs for the rocket. So I'm going to need to play around with that by quite a lot. So let me pick up some of these crate containers and just put a bunch of them okay so let's just see if this works it should be working work for single player same time for multiplayer yep everything here is working both in single player and multiplayer yeah thanks to using netcode for game objects this is actually surprisingly easy i mean you just make something work you just create a local instance and it automatically works just in single player. Okay, none of them have green crystals. Let me grab some green crystals. There's a ton of them over here. So let's go. I think this one has five things. None of them have some food. So let's put some food. All right, so I need to show these costs, but yeah. Oh, I put a progress bar. I forgot about that. That's good. Okay, yeah, so I think this one is... Let me actually just inspect the rocket the rocket base clone let me put this on debug view so on the rocket base here are the costs so then it just yeah i put just one gem green so right now it's on oh interesting the stage that one stores as an int instead of the text so that's fun that is interesting uh so yeah it is on internal value of two which means that it can still go one more so I think this is the lesson. So zero, one, two, 
three. Yeah, I think that one. So as soon as I finish that one, the build rocket, that one should say done. Did I do that? I think I did that. And nope. So we got one more. Okay, stage three. So if I go to the end of this one, it should go into stage four, which is done. And that one should be done. And there you go. Done. All right. Awesome. So internal value done. Okay. So I actually just named it exactly that because that one says the done and done. So yeah, I named it zero, one, two, three. All right. Yep. Okay. So yeah, that logic works. All right. So I do need to somehow show the costs. I need to do some design work in order to come up with some proper costs for all of these. So that is going to be quite something that I need to do and show those costs to the players so they know what to build. And with that, then I just need to clone the rest of the dinkies. Once those are done, then all the goals will be done. Then just interact with this in order to go outside. Yep. Sometimes get lost between all the lines and codes in your scripts. Uh, sometimes, but over here in Visual Studio, something really useful is a shortcut control and comma. And over here, you can search for all kinds of things. For example, I don't remember when is, uh, when am I spawning some zombies? So just search for zombie and then look. And over here, I see, okay, I've got a zombie class. Then I've got some zombie events. And I've got a zombie spawner, zombie visual, and so on. I can then search for dinky and see all the references where I'm referencing dinky. So tons of things, tons of events, dinky network manager. So lots of things. So yeah, so this search bar over here, if you ever forget something that is really, really useful. So that's control comma. If you're in Visual Studio, it is super useful. Okay, I'm out of water and my mouth is messed up. So, okay, so <clears throat> I think that's gonna be it. So I did a little bit of work, not as much as I would like, but still it was all right. So I just gotta finish this up in order to make another, uh, in order to make another update and then that should be interesting. But yep, at least right now the logic done, done. So getting all those goals that did indeed work. So this was indeed correct. So the time tick that did work correctly. Okay. All right. So that's going to be it. That was fun. That was interesting. I need to drink some more and so on. Okay. So let me just enable the background and just do that. All right. Uh, it's your birthday. It's in May. And can we see the doggo? I mean, they're both asleep. So nope. <laughs> Sorry, that doesn't work. <laughs> Uh, all right. I wish you would get some feedback as to your game. Yep, I definitely, I definitely want to. But yeah, still haven't had the time. There are so many things that I'm trying to do. So yeah. So for now, if you've got some feedback, you can just post on the Steam forums or in my YouTube comments, and I'll make sure to see it. And thank you so much for the feedback. All right. Uh, okay. So that's gonna be it. I need to drink some water and do a bunch of stuff. So yeah. Once again, thank you all so much for joining me on this random live stream in the middle of the week. I hope you've been playing the demo. I hope you've been enjoying it. Uh, if not, go ahead and make sure you add the game to your wish list, give the demo a try, and let me know what you think. Let me know your feedback. All right, so yeah. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. All right, bye everyone. Thanks.